How's it guys? So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on importing images from a database where we've stored it as a long blob and we're going to be bringing it into Unity where we can then display it. So as you can see I have my various questions which will have an image attached or will not. If it does not then I'll not have any button here displaying. Um, if we do have, let's just see if we can find one. Uh, glass is transparent. Oh no. There we go. Cool. So how many fingers on? Oh, okay. This is cutting off. I need to sort that out. But anyhow, um, how many fingers? There we go. You'll see. Cool. We do have an image attached. So if I click on it, I'm going to actually see this image, and that's what we want to achieve. So cool, let's get into it. For starters, you're going to want to create a PHP file. Um, if you don't know how to do this, there will be plenty of stuff online to show you how to. Um, easiest way would be to create a text document and then save as a PHP file. Um, I'm currently using Notepad++ to edit it. It's so much easier. Um, Again, you can Google this if you don't have it. Awesome. So first thing we want to do is we create our server, which we're going to connect to. So first you're going to have your server name, your username, password, and the table you're going to connect to. Now keep in mind the table is going to be this, which has all of your, OK, well, sorry. It's the little database that has all your tables in it. Cool. Um, Moving back, here we go. Um, we're going to now, okay, I'll come back to this. We're going to connect to the server using these um, parameters. Thereafter, we want to say now we're going to select everything from our questions table, which is going to be our questions table with all of our questions. And we're going to do it where our questions ID is equal to this parameter. Now we can look back here. The questions parameter, you see, is a post that we've retrieved from Unity where the variable is noted as this. If we go to our Unity and look at our script, you'll see, where is it? Here it is. So what we did is we created an I enumerated um, mm. <laughs> oh, my brain is slow today. It's early morning, guys. Please forgive me. Um, anyhow, we've created this form, and we're going to add a new field, which we're going to be sending the ver to send the variable across. And I've got my questions ID from an array of questions ID, and I'm sending it noted and labeled as this. Then we're going to create our new connection to our PHP file. At the moment, it's just stored locally. But later on, you can actually upload this onto your database. That's you'll find another tutorial somewhere else. Cool. And we're going to link up our image form, which will have these parameters attached to it. So awesome. Then we're going to yield the return. Now then, looking back at our PHP, this will echo back the image all right i'm not going to say too much on it it sends it back as a base 64 string so what you get is a string so that's why i'm saying dot text and i'm storing it as a string um, if i do this let's go right up here i've created it as a private string where its initial parameters are set to that. And every time I reset getting questions, which is all my questions, not just the image, I reset it back to its default because obviously every question is going to be different. Some have um, images, some don't. So now we are back here and we've got our string. Now the string will have thousands of random characters that will actually 
make up your image. So I have a condition that if the length is larger than 100 characters long, then it will actually be an image, obviously. If it's less than that, chances are it'll only be like 0 to 10, then it will in fact not be an image. It will just be a random string. It will be an empty um, parameter, one of these nulls. Oddly enough, they're not always 0. I don't know why, but that's the truth. So um, that's why I have this condition to it. So if it is, then I'm going to activate my game object, which is my button image, which is going to be my button image, which is a new button that I've made public and I can associate with. Coming back to my new game, let's get rid of these so we can look just at our image canvas cool you'll see it will be this one. Oh wait no sorry 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 this is my close one and in my actual game canvas oh sorry guys bit of a mess here will be this one so this is my button that I've created it's my image button and in my code so it's this image button that I have clicked and dragged onto my button image. So what happens is it will display then when I do have an image and when it does not have an image it will not display. So obviously then you cannot click on it. So set active false when it is not possible and when it is possible it will display. Okay moving on. Um, so that's all to get my image and to display the button. Thereafter I need to actually show it in my GUI. Alright, so I have two voids that I've made public so I can actually associate them to my buttons. So the first button is the view button and then the afterwards one would be the close button to get rid of that image. So first I want to create a boolean which I again do right at the top and I say private boolean view image boolean and I think I have a default set to false so what happens is when you click on it it switches to true and that's what's going to happen here when it's equal to true then it will generate the image and that's what you see here it's not too complicated first we're going to create the byte it has a byte array and we're going to convert it from the 64 string which is what you received earlier over here from your database and we're going to create a new texture 2D we're going to load the bytes um, that you've created that array which has been formed from your 64 string and then we're going to create your drawing of such parameters. Keep in mind that I have scale to fit. There is scale to cut. You don't want to use that generally because it will actually leave it at its original size and it will cut off the edges and that's not nice because obviously you want to show your whole picture. Um, you can toy around with its locations. Um, as you can see your X and Y location followed by the width and the height of the actual image play around with that. This just refers to the scale so this will mean 1 by 1 so it will be 440 by 440. If I made this 600 it will still be 440 by 440 because I have this here. So just keep that in mind. I like it like this but it's up to you guys what you do. Play around with it, it's fine. And then once I'm done, okay, and once I've got that true and it generates this image, I also want to set active my close image window. And that will be my image canvas that I have here. Reason being that I want the canvas is purely because I don't want people clicking on buttons and stuff or 
going home or anything like that while they're looking at the image because the image will overlay over all of this but it will not be taking up all the space because I don't want it to take up all the space so what it does is it just activates this canvas which actually brings up the button as well because I have it associated here as a UI um, button sorry this button and when I am done you can click on the close button which is associated with this I'll show you now and it will set it to false which will then turn off this because this condition will not be met so it will no longer display and then also it will close our canvas image canvas and which will again show us our game canvas so it's quite simple um, as I said I'll show you guys the how I associated it so you create your game object and you have all your buttons and everything associated um, if I come here and I add a component okay there should really be one on click you can drag this in here as you can see select map object go down and this will be close 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 image which will mean that it runs close image when you click on it very simple same thing for when you do the um, attached image yeah it's just there we go awesome guys that's about it um, I'm sorry if it wasn't a very neat tutorial I hope it made sense keep in mind that when you run it you're going to be calling your git image where is it here like this start quarantine git image start quarantine is purely because it's an I enumerator um, this will most likely be in your start field which I've also changed to an I enumerator because I have other um, data connections and all that going um, they have to be I enumerators because they're constantly looping through it will not happen instantly and also keep in mind that on GUI um, is constantly 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 running that is nothing you can turn off or so and that is why I've created this if condition because only that can really control whether or not you're going to display this image and also if you're going to create a GUI texture you need to do it in on GUI that's what I've picked up that's how I've done it and it works I hope it will work for you guys too again sorry for the unneatness of it I wasn't gonna go and create a whole new thing for it it's just something I wanted to do to help out anyone else that might be stuck all the best and keep well